Now, continuing on from part B of question number six, um, C3 for January 2019, says the point D lies on the line L such that the angle ACD is 90. So the point D lies along this line L such that ACD is 90. So we're going to draw another line here, okay, which is um, basically perpendicular to the line AC. So D is on the line L, so D must be on this line L, okay, but it is on the line L such that the angle between AC and CD is 90, so that angle ha has to be 90 degrees here. Okay, so we got to find the coordinates of the point D. So I'm going to call the coordinates of D, X, Y and Z. So the position vector of D, therefore, would be the position vector of D, okay, would be x, y, z, like this, x, y, and z. Okay, now, we know two things about the point D. Okay, D is on the line L. We know that. So it satisfies the equation of the line L. We also know, the second thing we know about D is that the line AC and the line CD are perpendicular. So we can say the vector AC and the vector CD are perpendicular to each other. AC and CD are perpendicular. We know that. Those are two things that we know about um, concerning the line D, which is going to help us to find the um, position of point D. Okay? So now I need to know the equation of the line L, which we already have. Let me just bring it over. Okay, so here we have the equation of line L, um, which we already found in the previous part of the question. Um, now, I know that the vector or the position vector of D, okay, or the point D satisfies this equation. So I could say that 2, 1, 9 plus lambda times 3, 1 minus 2 is definitely going to, there will definitely be a value of lambda for which this is going to be true. For which you're going to find the coordinates of D, as D satisfies the equation of the line. So there will definitely be a, a point, there will definitely be a value of lambda for which we will find the, the, the coordinates of D. So that's take into account the fact that D is on line 1. So from this, what we can we can determine is you have 2 plus 3 lambda is x. 2 plus 3 lambda is equal to x. And 1 plus lambda, 1 plus lambda is equal to y. And 9 minus 2 lambda is equal to z. Okay, so we've got like a series of equations that's derived from that. And the other thing is that AC and CD are perpendicular. Now, the, the, the vector from AC, again, we already got it from the previous part of the question, which I'll get now. Okay, so that's what we found AC to be in the last um, question. So we know that AC is perpendicular to CD. Okay, so we ne need to now know what the vector from C to D is. Well, the vector from C to D, you've got O to C, like if you have O here, if you have O here, and you have C there, and you have D there, then we can just make a little diagram just to illustrate. You should be familiar with this by now, but we want to find the vector from C to D. Okay, we've got to do C to D is equal to O to D minus O to C. Right? C to D minus O C plus OD, OD minus OC. Now O to D is the vector X, Y, Z and O to C is the vector again we need it from the last page, let's quickly get it now O to C is a vector 4 minus 3, 3 4 minus 3, 3 so the vector from O to C is O to C is 4 minus 3, 3 I'll just write it here 4 minus 3 and 3 okay so we can say that therefore that the vector from C to D is equal to X, Y, Z 
which is the position vector of D, which we have to find, minus 4 minus 3, 3, which is the vector from O to C, 4 minus 3 and 3. So that will give us something in terms of x, y, and z. You've got to have x minus 4, y plus 3, minus minus is plus, and z minus 3. Okay. And I know that AC and CD are perpendicular. Now, when two vectors are perpendicular, okay, then the dot product is 0. So A dot B is equal to 0 when A is perpendicular to B. So therefore, we know that A, C, and C, D are perpendicular. So we know that 2 minus 4 and minus 6 dot product with X minus 4, Y plus 3, and Z minus 3 must equal 0. So from this, we can say that 2 times X minus 4 minus 4 times Y plus 3 minus 6 times z minus 3 must be equal to 0. So we've got 2x minus 8 minus 4y okay, uh, minus 12 minus 6z plus 18 equals 0. Let me just make some space here question takes up a lot of space okay so now we've got an equation which we can simplify so we've got 2x minus 4y minus 6z 2x minus 4y minus 6z is equal to you got minus 20 plus 18 that's minus 2 so when we Add minus to both sides, so get plus 2. So 2x minus 4y minus 6z minus 18 minus 20 plus 18 minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. Okay, so now we're almost there. What I can do is I can take these three and I can substitute them into here. So I can write instead of x, 2 plus 3 lambda. So I have 2 times 2 plus 3 lambda. Okay, minus 4 times, and instead of y, I can write 1 plus lambda. Okay, minus 6 times, and instead of z, I can write 9 minus 2 lambda. And that has to equal 2. So now I can find lambda, and once I've found lambda, I'm almost home and right. So 4 plus 6 lambda minus 4 minus 4 lambda minus six nines of 54 plus 12 lambda you gotta be really careful in these questions with your signs one little slip up and you messed up uh, so you got four minus four is zero minus 54 so let's do six minus four is two plus so you have 14 lambda is equal to you're gonna have four and minus four cancel out so you're gonna have minus 54 plus two you're gonna add that to both sides you're gonna have 56 Okay, so lambda is going to be 56 divided by 14. 56 divided by 14, which gives us 4. Okay, that looks like it's a nice uh, number, so we kind of like, hopefully that's correct. Okay, now we've found lambda, we can now find the position vector of the point D, because we know that D is at the point when lambda is equal to 4. So if we know this is the equation of the line, Okay, I can just replace lambda with 4 and I'll get the position vector of D. Okay, so basically let me just make a little line here to separate these. Just to make it... Okay, so we know that the vector equation of the line R is equal to um, 219 plus lambda times 3, 1 minus 2. 219 plus lambda times 3, 1, minus 2. Let's just make sure that it's very easy to make a mistake because it's just a minus sign or something. 2, 1, 9, lambda, 3, 1, minus 2. Okay, so we know that D is where lambda is equal to 4. 
So we need to just replace lambda with 4. So we can say that therefore the vector from O to D, the position vector of D, will be 2 plus 4 times lambda. So that's 2 plus, sorry, 3 times lambda, sorry. 2 plus 12, which is 14. 1 plus 4 times 1, which is 4, that's 5. And 9 minus 8, which is 1. 4, 15, 1. So therefore, if you want to write it as a coordinate, the coordinates of the point D are 14, 5, and 1. And there we have that answer to that long part of the question. Then it says, find the exact area of the triangle ADC, giving your answer as a fully simplified set. So let's go back to the diagram. We want the area of this triangle ACD. So you basically have a right angle triangle. Okay, you have a right angle triangle ACD. So let me just draw that triangle down here. We have a right angle triangle ACD. Okay. Something like this. Okay, just say that's A, that's C, that's D. So that's A that's C and that's D and it's a right angle triangle so basically the area of this triangle will be given by a half times the magnitude of the vector AC times the magnitude of the vector AD simple as that okay because a half times base times height this is like a right angle so you can call this the basis of the height so if we know the vector from A to D and the vector from A to C, uh, we can work out the um, the vector from A to C and the vector from, sorry, not AD, that should say CD, sorry. I wrote AD, I meant CD. So if we know the, the magnitude of A to C and the magnitude of C to D, we can work out the area of this triangle, okay? So do we have the vector from A to C? Yes, we do. It's two, four, uh, minus four, minus six. And the vector from C to D, we can work it out from here. So the vector from A to C is 2 minus 4 minus 6. 2 minus 4 minus 6. So that's no problem. Now the vector from C to D, we know is given by what we found here. X minus 4, Y plus 3 and Z minus 3. Okay, X minus 4. Why don't I just do this? Okay, it's going to come out huge. Well, let's just, oops, oh, daisy. Let's just take this and bring it down to where we need it. Okay, so this is the vector from C to D that we worked out in terms of X, Y, and Z. And now we know X, Y, and Z, we're right. So that's the vector from A to, um, that's the vector from C to D. All right, so yeah, so four, three minus three. So that was, would that be the vector from C to D? I guess we could do, we could work out where X, Y, and Z are. One second. So X is going to be, um, 2 plus 2 plus 12, 14 so that's 14 minus 4 which is 10 so you're going to have 10 and Y is going to be 5 so that's 5 plus 3 is yeah, so it's the same as that 5 plus 3 is 8 and Z is basically 1 which is going to be minus 2 10, 8 and minus 2 that's the vector from C to D. Yeah, nine minus eight, yeah, that's right. Okay, good. So now we know that's a vector from C to D, so uh, we can find the magnitudes of these vectors. So the area is gonna be a half times the magnitude of A to C, which is going to be the square root of, you're gonna have four plus 16 plus 36. Okay, four plus, that's gonna be 56, as we found earlier, 
times the magnitude of C to D, which is 164 plus 468. Okay, that's 100 plus 64 plus 4. Okay, so we can just stick that in our calculator if we wish and get the answer. So we're going to have the square root of 56 multiplied by the square root of 168 and divide that by 2 and we get 28 times root 3. 28 times root 3 okay square units so there's the answer for part d okay of this question and the question did ask us to put it as a fully simplified set so you don't round it to anything and there we have finished this vectors question